Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about Python for absolute beginners, zero to hero in one hour. Myself, Mohammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Well, before we start with our Python programming language, let's start what we are going to have in this particular video. Well, first of all, we'll start with the installation of Python, then installation of IDE, then we'll have our first program as Hello World. Then we'll talk about the variables, then we'll move towards the data types, then we'll see how we can take the inputs from the user. We'll also talk about the type conversion, then we'll see what kind of different operators do we have in Python programming language. Then we'll talk about the strings in Python. Then we'll see tuples, if else statements, loops, functions, and then we'll also see some built in math functions. After that, we'll see lambda function. Then we'll talk about the dictionaries in Python programming language. Then we'll see the operator precedence. And at the end, we'll see logical and comparison operators. So, first of all, let's start with the installation of Python and installation of IDE. To download Python, just go to python.org slash downloads and from there download the latest version. At the moment, 3.11.2 is the version available. Just click on it and it will download the Python for you. I have already done that and I have already installed it. In your case, you just need to follow the instructions that are given on the screen. So when you will open your downloaded file, you will see a window like this. From here, you just need to follow the instructions that are given to you and your python will be installed in your system i'll not go into the installation of it i'll just close this one and now i'll talk to you about how you can download ide just go to your code.visualstudio.com download and you will see a window like this for this particular video we are going to use visual studio code as i'm going to use it on my windows operating system that is why i'll go with the first option just click on this windows button and it will download a file for you for your Visual Studio code. I have already downloaded it and now let's open this one. When you will open your file that you have downloaded for Visual Studio code, you will see a window like this. From there, click on I accept the agreement, click on next, go to the directory where you want to install your Visual Studio code. I'm okay with the default location, so I'll click on next. Again, I'll click on next. Do not change anything and click on next. From here, just click on install and this will install your Visual Studio code into your system. As it gets installed, let's see the Python version that I have available in my system. So for that purpose, I'll write here cmd and I'll open my command prompt. In my command prompt, I'll write a command as python space hyphen hyphen version and let's see what do we get. Well, at the moment, I'm using python 3.11.1. So this command also confirms that Python is installed into my system. I'll close my command prompt and we are also done with our Visual Studio Code installation. So I'll just click on finish and it will launch my Visual Studio Code along with it. Here it is and this is how it looks like. Well, before you do anything else, there are some extensions that we should install in order to have better performance from Visual Studio Code. Well, if you see here, we have different sections. First one is explore, then we have search, then we have source control, we have run and debug and here we have extension section. Just click on this one and from here we'll install an extension that will help us running our code. So just search for code runner and here it is. Just click on this one and make sure to install it into your Visual Studio code. I have installed it already that is why it says uninstall. Okay now there is one more thing that you need to do and that is here we have a gear icon just click on it and go to your settings i'll just search for run in terminal and here we have an option that says run in terminal make sure that you check this option if you check this option you will be able to use and you will be able to run your programs inside your visual studio code so that was all about it and now i'll just close this one and now let's talk about how can we start our first program well as it's a folder or explorer section just click on open folder and go to the directory where you want to create your projects. So here I have created a folder onto my desktop with the name of Python. 
Just click on the select folder and now this will be the directory for all of your python files. So now we need to create a python file so that we can start our coding. So for that purpose, just click on this plus icon that says new file or right click here and click on new file or click on this file button and from here you can also create a new file. But let's go with the GUI. Just click on it and write the name that you want to give to your file. I'll name it as index.py. PY is an extension for the Python programming language. Hit enter and you see we also have icon for Python. So now we are ready to start with our first program for our Python programming language. Okay, in case if you want to close this section so that you can have better visualization of your Visual Studio code, just click on your explorer one more time and it will get closed. Okay, let's start with our first program and that is hello world program which is kind of default program for any programming language. How can we do that? Well in Python it's really simple. First of all write here print then you will have your brackets and in your brackets you need to have your quotation marks and inside your quotation marks you can write anything i'll write here hello world after that let's save this program and now it's time to run it to run this program there are several ways first of all you have a run button at the top from here you can click on run without debugging and in case if you want to debug it just click on start debugging well as you are a beginner that is why i'll not go into the details of debugging let's leave it the other way is here we have a play button and along with that we have drop down arrow just click on this button and from here click on run code or right click on your program anywhere and you will see an option that says run code so you have a lot of options and one more is you have a shortcut as Control alt plus n key in your windows operating system so now i'll just click on run code and here you can see we have an output as hello world it means our python is installed successfully our ide is working and we are also done with our first program so that was all about hello world program and now let's see how can we work or what are variables in python programming language well first of all you need to mention a name that you want to give to your variable I'll name it as var. Then you should have an equal sign and then you will declare your variable. By declare I mean you need to give value to your variable. If I write here 10, it means 10 has been assigned to this particular variable and it has been stored in a memory in your system. So in case if you want to call this particular value from your memory, you cannot call it directly. Now you have to use this particular variable that has the address of this particular value in the memory so with the help of this particular variable you can get this value let's print it out okay now to print it out we have to write here variable name without quotation marks because inside quotation marks this will work as a string so if i write here variable or where inside my print statement Let's save this, let's try to run this and let's see what do we get. Well at the moment we get var as an output and this is because it is inside the quotation marks. Let's remove these quotation marks and now let's try to run this one. And now at this moment we should get 10 as an output. So I'll right click here, I'll click on run code and now as you can see we have 10 as an output. Now let's write here var again equals to 20. Now what should we get as an output? Well. Python program works from top to bottom and this time it will have 20 as a value because 20 has replaced the previous value which was 10 because it is getting assigned after the first one. So let's run this one and we'll get 20 this time as you can see in here. Now there are many type of variables that we can have in our Python programming language. For example I want to store a string inside a variable. How can I do that? Well, for that purpose, you just need to declare your variable. For example, I name my variable as name equals and to have a string as its value, I need to use my quotation marks and here I can write anything. Now, Zubair has been assigned to the variable that is called as name. Now, let's save this one and now let's print our name. So for that purpose, inside my print statement, I'll write here name. Let's save this and let's try to run this one. And this time it will print Zubair. 
here you can see and now i'll show you that how you can have floating values or decimal point values in python programming language well for that purpose again you do not need to worry about anything i'll just write here temperature this is a name of variable obviously after that we'll have equal sign and then you can assign any value i'll give it a value as 100.5 and this floating point value will be stored in this particular temperature variable. Let's try to print it. So I'll write here temperature. Here it is. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. And here we have floating point output. Before we move ahead, here you can see we have a lot of outputs on our terminal. Well, you can remove it as well. Just right here, clear, hit enter and you have a new terminal in here. Okay, there is one more type of variables or you can say data type in Python programming language that you can use and that is boolean. Boolean means yes or no, true or false, one or zero. How can we do that? Well, I'll just hit enter and I'll declare a new variable. I'll name it as boolean. I'll equal it to true. In case if you want to go for the false value, you have to write here false and make sure you go with the first letter as capital because boolean type of variable or data type is case sensitive as you can see here now it is giving you a caution if i go with the capital f it will work fine there is one more thing that you might have noticed you can name your variable anything as there is no rule in terms of defining your variable yes you cannot use keywords as variable name for example if i write here bool with double o you can see here it is indicating that bool is already a keyword and we cannot use it as a variable name. So make sure you use anything but a keyword as your variable name. Let's say I want to have two words for my variable. How can I do that? Well, I'll write here first name. But as you can see, it is not easy to understand or read this particular variable. So for that purpose, to make it more understandable, we can write here underscore. And now it is more understandable and very easy to read. Now I'll give it a value as anything and let's print our first name variable, which is right here. Let's save this one and let's try to run this. And here we have an output. Okay. What if I want to print more than two variables inside my print statement? Well, it's very simple. Just inside your print statement, write your variable name, give it a comma, give it a space and write your second variable. I'll call my name. I'll write here name and I'll save this one and let's try to run this. And now you can see we have two outputs as Aslam and Zubair. So this is how you can print out your two variables inside your print statement. So that was all about how you can declare your variables, how you can use them and how you can have different kind of values inside your variables. And now let's talk about the input methods in our Python programming language. Well, first of all, I'll remove everything. I'll clear my terminal from here and let's talk about it. Well, let's say you want to take input from the user or you want to give input yourself when you run the program. Well, for that purpose, we have a keyword as input. And this is how it looks like. After that, you will have your brackets and inside your brackets, you can pass your message or you can pass your string. So for that purpose, first of all, I'll have my quotation marks and inside I'll write here, please enter your name i'll give it a space and let's try to run this one okay why i have given here a space well i'll show it to you in a while just save this one let's try to run this here it says please enter your name and after that here we have a space and this space indicating that after this particular word we have a new word so i'll write here zubair and let's hit enter okay you might have seen that we do not have zubair as an output why is that so well, for that purpose, we have to print out the input that we have taken from the user in our program. How can we do that? Well, we can store this particular input that we have taken from the user inside our variable. So I'll name my variable as name equals. And now whatever the user will enter as an input will get stored in this particular variable. After that, let's use this variable to print it out. So I'll write here print. And inside that, I'll use my quotation mark and I'll write here, welcome. I'll give it a space. And after that, I'll use plus sign. I'll give it a space. And here I'll write the name of the variable, which is name. It will print out the name along with this particular message. Okay, there is one more new thing that you have seen for the first time. And that is this plus sign. Well, it is called as concatenation. 
as we are going to print out a variable and a string for that purpose we have to concatenate these two and plus sign will concatenate them now if i try to save this and let's run this here it says please enter your name i'll write here name hit enter and down here it says welcome to bear and now let's have another example and this time i want user to enter his age how can i do that well first of all let's declare our variable and it will be equal to brackets and inside that we'll have our message i'll write here please enter your age let's have a space and after that let's print it out how can we do that well simply write here print and inside print you can have your variable name which was age and before we run this one let's remove this one from here let's save this and before we run this one here we have to write input as well because input is a method that will take the input from the user now let's save this one let's try to run this here it is saying please enter your age so i'll write here 28 hit enter and here we have output as 28 and that was all about the input methods and now let's move ahead okay let's talk about type conversions what do we mean by that well first of all if i write here yob which means year of birth equals i'll have my input method and inside my brackets i'll have a message as please enter your year of birth and after that i'll give it a colon space now if the user inputs its year of birth what i want i want to deduct it from 2023 how can i do that well i declare 2023 minus yob which is year of birth of the user that he or she will input i'll show it in a variable you can name your variable anything i'll name it as ans or answer and let's try to print this one i'll write here print i'll call my variable in which i'll have my output and let's try to save this and now let's try to run this one here it says please enter your year of birth and here you can see we have an error it says type error unsupported operator types for int and string what does it mean and why do we have this error well whenever you use your input method in your python programming language it returns you the value as string value for example if you have written here 1993 like this one it will return you the value like this 1993 in string that is why you have an error because python doesn't know how to subtract string from int or how to subtract int from string and as we know we have number type of variables in python we have string type of variable in python and we have boolean type of variables in python so you need to make sure that what kind of output you want from your input variable how can we do that well for that purpose type conversion comes in now here as we are getting yob as string we need to convert it into an int variable type how can i do that well just write here int and inside its bracket you need to call your variable whom value you want to change and now whatever you will get from your year of birth will be converted into int type of data and it will get subtracted from 2023 and it will get stored into your variable that is called as ans and you can print it out now let's save this one and let's try to rerun it now it says please enter your year of birth and now if i write here my year of birth hit enter and this is the output we got it means it is working pretty fine okay let's change it and let's have another example this time i'll write here salary and inside that i'll change the message as please enter your salary after that here i'll have a variable and in that variable what i want i want to multiply that salary by 10 percent how can i do that well first of all i'll write here salary multiply by and in python you can do multiplication with the help of a static sign after that i'll multiply it with 1.1 and now if i try to print my answer it will give me error again why is that so well it is because as you can see we have an error and this time it says non end of type float well this time it is because we are multiplying our string with our float value as you can see it is in decimal points and as i have mentioned earlier that we get output from our input method as a string so first of all we need to make sure that we convert its variable type so at this moment as we are going to get the answer in float because of the multiplication with our float number that is why we need to convert our salary variable data type 
into a float. How can I do that? Well, you just need to write here float and inside the brackets of your float, you will have your variable of your input. And now you will not have any problem. Now let's save this one and let me clear my terminal first. And let's try to rerun it. Here it says, please enter your salary. If I write here 50,000, it enter. Now you can see it has multiplied it over 10% and it has given me the answer without any problem. So this is how you can do type conversion. Okay, we have seen that how we can convert our string into float or int type of data. Well, is there any way that we can convert our int or float values into string type of data? Well, first of all, I'll remove everything from here. Well, first of all, I'll declare my variable as my underscore int. I'll give it a value as 20. And let's have another variable as my underscore str equals and to convert your int into your string values, we have a method as str. And inside your brackets, you need to call your variable whose value you want to convert. As I have int variable or int value in my my int variable, so I'll call it my underscore int. Here it is. And now this has been converted into a string value. Let's try to print out both. How can I do that? Well, I'll just write here the int value is and this time i'll have a space after that i'll have a comma i'll call my int variable so i'll write here my underscore int after that let's have another print statement i'll copy this one i'll print it out and this time i'll call my my underscore string here it is let's run this and let's see what do we get well both the print statement giving us the same value this one giving us int value, this one giving us string value. And there is one more thing that we can do here. And that is, as I have mentioned earlier, that to concatenate, we have to use plus sign. So let's try to use plus sign in here and let's see if it works or not. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. As you can see, we are getting error. Why is that so? And it says can only concatenate str not into string. It says we cannot concatenate string with int we only can concatenate two strings together. So for example, if I remove plus sign from my first output, and if I write here comma, let's save this, and now let's try to run this one. And at the moment, it is working pretty fine. So now you know that where to use plus sign and where to use comma sign. And if I use comma sign with my strings, I'll not have any problem because comma sign work with everything. Let's save this one and let's try to run this. As you can see, we have successfully printed our output. So that was all about the type conversion and let's move ahead. The next thing that we are going to talk about is operators. Well, let's clear our screen first. Well, there are several types of operators in Python programming language. For example, arithmetic operators, logical operators, comparison operators, assignment operators, etc. Logical and comparison operators will be discussed at the end of this particular video. Now I'll talk about the arithmetic and assignment operator. You remember we write here variable name equals and we give it some value. Equal here is an assignment operator. It is assigning the value 10 to this particular variable. And now if I write here variable plus equals 10. This particular assignment operator will add 10 to whatever we already have in this particular variable. Earlier we saw that if we write here, let's say 20, if I save this, let's print it out and let's run this one. This time it will print 20 as 20 is the latest value. But if I write here plus equals, it means it will add 20 to whatever is there already in our variable. So now we should get 30 as an answer as it will add 20 plus 10. Now let's save this one. Let's try to run this. And here we have answer as 30. Same goes for other variables. If I write here minus, it will deduct 20 from 10. So we should get minus 10 as an answer. Here you can see we have minus 10. Let's go for multiplication. We should get 200 as an answer. Here it is. And let's go for division. For division, we use forward slash in Windows operating system. Let's run this one. And here we have 0.5 as an output. So this is called assignment operator. So instead of writing here variable equals 10 and then writing here variable equals 10 plus 20, you can also follow the way that I have shown you. And that is you can simply write here plus equals and it will add your values in your variables. So how easy it is. So this was all about the assignment operator 
and I think it was very easy. Now let's talk about the arithmetic operators. Well, in Python programming language, we can do different things. For example, we can add numbers, we can detect number, we can multiply number, we have division, modulus, and we can have power of numbers. How can we do that? Well, first of all, I'll declare my first variable as a equals 10. And for second variable, I'll have b as 15. So first of all, I'll write here print and inside that I'll have a plus b. Let's save this one. Let me clear my terminal first. Now let's try to rerun it. We have 25 as an output. Let's try to deduct these. Let's save this. Let's run it. Now we have minus 5. And to multiply both of these, we use a static key as I have mentioned earlier several times. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. So here we have 150 as an output and let's try to have division. Let's save this one more time and let's run it. And here we have 0.66 as an output. Now what if I want to have power as 15 for 10? So I'll write here double static. It means 10 powers 15. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. And here we have this particular output as 15 was the power of 10. There is one more thing in our Python and that is integer division. What do we mean by that? Well, if I write here double forward slashes, if I save this, it will divide A with B and whatever the nearest value is, it will give us that output. If I run this one, here it gives zero. Now let's change these values. I'll write here 100. Let's save this one. Let's try to rerun it. But before that, let's clear our terminal and let's try to run it now. And this time it has given six as an answer. Why is that so? Well, we know that 15 multiplied by six is 90 and rest is 10. And if you round that off, you will get the nearest value and that was six. So this is how arithmetic operator works. Okay, let's say you want to use more than one arithmetic operators at the same time. Well, Python allows you to do that. How can you do it? Well, first of all, just write here a plus b, give it a comma and you can have a multiplication b, again give it a comma and you can have again your variable as divided by b. Let's try to print it out. And here we have the output for all three arithmetic operations. Along with these operators, I'll remove all these. I'll write here addition of two numbers is I'll give it a space and as you know as we are going to concatenate string with int we have to use comma now i'll copy this line and i'll print it out two more time this time i'll write here minus and here i'll have multiplication and here i have different message this time i'll write here multiplication and for this one i'll write here division let's save this one and let's try to run it so here we have output along with our string so this is how you can do and perform different arithmetic operations in your Python programming language. And that was all about it. And now let's talk about the string. We have seen that how we can use string, but there are many other aspects of string that we should discuss. First of all, if I declare my variable as var equals, and I have a value as this is my Python course. This particular string in Python programming language work as an object. Object mean any object in your real life. For example, let's say you have a mobile phone in your hand and it's an object and that object can perform different operations. For example, you can make a call with it. You can have social media on it. You have different buttons. You have screens. You can do mathematical operations with it and you can do multiple things with your phone as it's an object. So just like that particular object, string is also an object in our Python programming language and we can do different things with it. What are those things? Just write your variable name and write here dot. As soon as you write dot, you see we have different functions that we can perform with our string. Here we have replace, format, capitalized, center, count, and if you scroll down, you have all these things that you can perform with your string. Well, let's see some of these. First of all, I'll talk about the upper. In Python, we have a method called as upper, and whenever we talk about a method, we need to have its brackets. Now let's print it out. So I'll write here print and I'll have its brackets. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. What it will do? Well, it will convert this particular string in all uppercases. Let's run it. We have everything in uppercase. Just like upper, we have lower as well. So I'll write here lower. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. 
and now everything will be in lower case well original value was in lower case although i'll just convert it into upper case let's save this and now let's run it and now we have everything in lower case other than that if i write here find as the name suggests it will find out anything for you in the string for example i'll write here single quotation marks and i'll write here my let's save this one and let's try to run it it is giving me eight why is it giving me eight well in python programming language the index starts from zero so t is at zeroth place h is at one then two three four five six seven eight so you can see that my is starting from the eighth index and that is why it has returned as the eight so find command or find method return you the index of what you are looking for for example if i want to just look for a particular character i'll write here y let's save this one and let's remove this one because it will give us an error and now if i run this it will give us nine because y is present at the ninth index okay you might be wondering or you might have a question that we have y at two places in my and in python as well well find method will return you the instance of what you are looking for at the first place it is not concerned with the second or third occurrence it will only return you the address or the location of first occurrence there is one more thing that i want to discuss and that is along with find there is another way that we can follow to find out something from our string and that is if i write here print and inside that i'll have my string as is give it a space and i'll write here in in is a keyword in python programming language and after that i'll call my variable as which is var so basically what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to look for is in this particular variable so basically this print statement will find out is for me in this particular variable and then it will return the value and the difference is this will return us boolean value either it will be true or false but this particular print statement or this particular find method will return us the location or the index let's save this one and let's run this and here you can see for the first print statement it has returned as 9 and for the second one it has returned as true let me write something which is not available in the string i'll write here r let's save this one and now let's try to run it and this time it gave us false because r is not present in this particular string just like find method we have another method that is called as replace in our string what does it do i'll write here replace okay i want to replace my with something else how can i do that well just write here your first string that you want to replace give it a comma and you can have your second string and then write the string that you want to have i'll write here r let's save this one and now let's try to run it i'll right click here click on run code and here it says this is our python course so my has been replaced successfully with this particular string so replace method just do that there are many other methods that you can do with your strings for example here we have join join concatenates your two string into one and down here we have many more but the ones that i have discussed with you are enough as you are a beginners so that was all about your strings and now let's see what do we have next and now let's talk about the tuples well tuples are inbuilt data types in python programming language that represents a sequence of any object that are separated by a comma and they are enclosed in parentheses and a tuple is an immutable object it means you cannot change it and we use it to represent fixed collection of items so as we have seen till now that how we can store different values in different variables so tuple is like you can store more than one value in one variable how can we do that well first of all i'll write here tup equals and let's say i want to store multiple values in here i can do that with the help of comma so here i can store as many values as per my liking and now if i try to print this one i'll write here tup let's save this one and let's try to run it so here you can see it has written me an array type of output in which i have all the data that i have stored in this particular tuple not only int values you can also store string type of values in it how can you do that well it's really simple just use your single quotation marks have your value i'll write here one for the second one i'll have a comma again quotation marks now I'll write here two again comma again quotation marks and i can have as many values as per my liking now let's try to run it and let's see if we get 
one two three yes we do get one two three as an output now what if i want to have string as well as integers into my variable or into my tuple can we do that let's see this time i'll write here comma one comma two comma three comma four let's save this one and let's try to run it yes i can do that now let's have one more thing this time and let's add boolean values in here and we know by boolean we mean true or false so i'll simply write here true let's save this one and let's try to run it one more time and here you can see it is working pretty fine there is one more thing that you can do you can find out the type of your tuple or you can find out what is the type of this particular object how can you do that just write here print inside that write here type and inside the type brackets write here the name of your variable and it is tup in my case i'll save this one let's run this and here it is returning you that it belongs to class tuple so this is how you can use tuple to store different values in a variable so that was all about it and now let's move ahead now we'll talk about the if else statement well as the name suggests we'll see if first condition is true then we perform some activities and if it is not in else clause we'll perform some other activities first of all if i take a variable as temp and let's have a value as 30 now i'll use if else statement i'll write here if temp is greater than 25 and here we need to add columns after that hit enter and you see here now our cursor is under the temp this is called indication if you try to write under the if statement it will not take it into the if clause so make sure to follow the rule so i'll go under the temp and i'll write here print it's a hot day and after that you can have anything as per your liking let's have another message i'll write here drink a lot of water okay there is one more thing that i want to discuss in here and that is if you see here i have used double quotation mark but you can also use single quotation mark for this purpose if i write here single quotation mark and i'll write here it's a hot day but we know that in it's we have to add apostrophe how can we do that well i'll simply write here single quotation mark but here we saw a problem and that is my python thinks that this is the end of string that is why it has taken that as something else so to get rid of this problem make sure to use double quotation marks whenever you want to use or you intend to use single quotation mark inside of your string and now you will see we do not have any problem so that is why you have to be sure when you want to use single quotation marks and double now if i try to run this program let me save this one if i run this here it says it's a hot day drink a lot of water okay here i will put a space in here now let's save this one and it will print out this output okay what if i want to have another condition or i want to check one more condition how can i do that well just hit enter go to the start of your line and write here l if l if mean i am going to check another condition so i'll write here temp is greater than 20 what it should do again i'll print some message in here i'll write here print i'll write here today is a nice day and after 20 make sure to have your colon otherwise you will get an error in your program let's have another print message and this time i'll write here enjoy the day let's save this one and let's try to run it and it says it's a hot day drink a lot of water why is that so well this is because our condition has met at the first check that is why it is running this code and it has ignored this one and if statement just do that it only checks the true condition and returns you that particular answer if i write here 25 in this case this will get ignored and my python will run this one let's run this one and here it says today is a nice day enjoy the day because this condition is false this time because temperature is not greater than 25 but surely it is greater than 20. let's have another l if statement so for that again i'll write here e l i f and here we can have another condition and you can write anything as per your liking so i'll go for the temperature and let's see if it is less than 20 and we know that it is not less than 20 so in this case this condition will also be false but let's see how does it work so again i'll write here print temperature is low today 
in case if this condition is true we should get this particular output let's run this one and no this condition is not true that is why it has not returned us this one it is returning us this answer now at the end there is one more thing that i want to discuss and that is if i hit enter and if i write here print statement right under the elif what it will do it will print out anyway it will not check any condition or it is not concerned with any condition because this print statement is not part of your if else clause in order to make sure that your code is a part of if else clause you have to make sure about indentation so now if i write here print statement under this one this print statement will be considered as a part of my if else statement and now i'll show you else clause i'll write here else colon and then i'll print whatever i want to so basically l clause gets executed when all the conditions are false at the moment let me change this condition i'll change it to greater than 25 and here i'll write print it's a very cold day i'll just save this one and i'll change my temperature to 10 so now as my temperature is 10 this condition will get false as temperature is greater than 25 here it will again take this as a false condition and in this one again it will take it as a false condition so in case if every condition is false the else clause will get executed now let's save this one and let's try to run it and at the end it says it's a very cold day because every condition was false and that is why else clause has been executed so this is how if else statement works and you can have more than one condition at the same time as well for example if i write here and temp equals 10 it means it will check if both conditions are true and if i write here or it means it will check if any one of these conditions are true but this is all about the comparison operator i'll talk about comparison operator in detail later in this video so for the moment we are done with the if else statement and now let's move ahead and let's see what do we have next and now let's talk about the loops i'll talk about for loop and while loop well, we use loops when we have multiple items or we want to perform a function multiple times. Let's say I have a variable as var equals and I have multiple values in it. I'm going to use list this time. If I write here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So basically I have 5 values. Now if I write here print and I print my variable and let's run this one. Here you can see it has printed everything as an output. But what if I want to iterate through all the items in my list in my variable. So for that purpose, we can use for loop. So I'll write here for items in and after that, write the name of the variable, which is var in my case, colon. And down here, I'll write print and inside my print statement, I need to pass my items. So I'll just save this one. And now let's try to run it. And now you can see it has printed single item in one iteration. So basically what it has done in here, first of all, it has taken a variable that I have named as items and it has taken it in a war. So in the first iteration, it has printed the first item and in the second one, it has printed the second, then third, then fourth and then fifth. So for loop works like that. There is another way that we can follow and that is while loop, but its code is a bit complex than the for loop. But still, let's see how we can make it. First of all, we need to take a variable as i equals zero. Then I'll write here while i is less than length of my variable, which is var in my case. Now it will make sure that in case if this particular variable is less than this particular variable, the condition stays true. After that, we'll have our colon and then I'll write here print var and in that I'll pass my variable, which was i. So it will iterate through all these items in my variable. After that, you just need to have increment in your i variable. And how can you do that? We'll just write here i equals i plus one. Save your program. And now let's try to run this one. And here you can see this is the output from the for loop. And this is the output from our while loop. So basically both of these are working in the same order, but there is a difference in a code. There is another way that you can follow to use your for loop and while loops and that is nested loop. It means loop inside a loop. For example, this is my for loop and inside that I can declare another for loop. It is like for item one in var and after that colon and here you will have your print statement. And now if you execute it, you will have output 25 times. 
let me remove this one i'll just save this let me run this one and here you can see we have 25 outputs so this is how you can use loops in your python programming language and that was all about it and now let's move ahead let's talk about the python functions well function is a block of code in python programming language that only gets executed whenever it's called so here i have defined my function and to define your function we have a keyword as def after that you have to give name to your function in my case i have given it as hello and inside my function you can see i have printed a statement you can perform any other operation in that as well for example if i write here print 4 plus 4 and after that here if you see in terms of identification i'm out of this particular function and basically i have called this function in here now if i save this if i run this i will get hi how are you and 8 as an answer here you can see so this is how function works okay let's say i want to give value to my function on my own so how can i do that first of all what i need to do i need to pass a variable in my function i'll name it as f name or like first name and inside my print statement what i'll do i'll pass my variable that i have taken in my function so i'll write here f name and when i'm going to call this particular function i'll pass the value in it so this time i'll write here zubair so basically it will print out zubair whenever i'll call this function so let's save this one let's run it and here you can see it has printed zubair and it as an answer now let's have another function in which we'll try to add two numbers but we'll take the input from the user or you can say we'll add the number when we'll call our function so i'll write here define or def and after that i have to define my function i'm going with add and inside that i'll take two variables first one will be a and the second one is b colon it means it start the parenthesis or it starts the boundary of my function after that here i'll write print and i want to add these two numbers so i'll simply write here a plus b and before that let's have a string i'll write here your addition is equal to let's have a colon let's have a space and we also know that whenever we want to concatenate our string and our integers we have to use comma inside that and that is why now we do not have any problem let's get out of this and let's call this function i'll call it as add and inside that i'll pass the value for my variable a and b i'll pass 4 and 5 and we should get 9 as an answer let me remove first function let's save this one and let's try to run it and here you can see it says your addition is equal to 9 so this is how function works in python programming language now let's talk about the math functions for example if i write here x equals and in that i store multiple values i write here 1 2 3 and let's have some other random values well what if i want to check what is the minimum in all of these well we have math functions that we can use to find that out how can we use that well simply write here print and inside your print statement use a function that comes as predefined in python programming language known as min and in min pass the variable i'll pass my x let's save this one and let's try to run it as you can see it has returned as one it means one is the minimum value in this now what if i want to find out the maximum well for that purpose we have a function as max and let's save this one and let's try to run it and as we know that 10 is the maximum value and it has just returned us that other than min and max we have another function that is called as absolute and that is denoted as abs what this function do let me write a value in here i'll write here minus 456.34 this math function will return you the positive value so as you can see i have entered a negative value let's try to run this and let's see what do we get and as i mentioned it has returned me the positive value so this is the function of absolute now there are some other math functions that we can use but for that purpose we have to import math library library in python is just like a book of all the rules in which everything is defined you just have to call it and you can use it directly so how can we use that particular library just write import give it a space and as we are talking about math so i'll write here math and we have successfully imported math library into our python program now let's say i have a number as 25 and i want to find the square root of this particular number how can i do that well for that purpose we have a function in math library called as square root 
so in order to call it just write here math dot square root and it is called as sqrt now save this program and now in return it will return us 5 as an answer so let's run this and here we have 5.0 as an answer let's change this value in here and let's see if we get a new answer or not yes now this time it has returned me 4 as an answer so this is how square root function works let's say you want to get the log 10 of any number how can you do that well if i write here 1 and let's write here log 10 let's save this and let's try to run this and here it has written me the log 10 of number 1 so this is how you can use your math library and we also saw some of the math functions so that was all about it and now let's talk about the lambda function well in python a lambda function is a small anonymous function that can take any number of arguments but it can only have one expression lambda functions are often used as a quick way to create function that are needed only once and doesn't need to be named so we have seen that how we can create functions and we also seen that we must have to give some name to our function but with lambda we do not have to define our function with a name so how does it work well first of all i'll talk about its expression or you can say its syntax i write here lambda after that we pass some arguments to it then we have colon and then we pass our expression so this is the syntax of our lambda function now let's have one of its example i'll write here sum equals after that i'll write here lambda then i'll have my two variables x and y then we'll have our colon and then we'll define our function or what we want to perform on our x and y i want to have addition of these so i'll write here x plus y and in my print statement i'll simply write here print and inside that i'll call my function which is sum in my case and in that i'll pass the values for x and y which is 2 and 3 now we should get 5 as an answer and here you can see we have 5 as an output now let's perform another operation this time i'll remove y from here and i'll write here multiply by 10 and let's rename our function as well i'll write here mul for multiplication after that i'll call my function which is multiplication and inside that i'll pass the value for x let's go for 5 let's save this one and this time we should get 50 as an output as 10 will get multiplied with this 5 which is the value for x so let's run this one and here we have 50 as an output so this is how lambda function works that was all about it and let's move ahead now let's talk about the dictionaries in python programming language well we have seen that we can store multiple values in a variable like this this is a string this is an integer and this is a boolean value but all of these values are associated with one variable that is called as x with the help of dictionaries we can store multiple values but we can have different values associated with different variables or you can say with different keys what it is well let me just write the code in here well as you can see here i have defined a variable as person and it's a dictionary and it is indicated by curly braces after that here i have a first key as name and its value is john then i have its age and its value is 30 and then i have its gender and its value is male and if you see all the keys are defined as string and their values can be anything this is a string this is an integer and you can also take float values or you can also go for boolean as well now what if i want to access the values of this particular variable or this particular dictionary which is called as person well for that purpose i'll simply have to write here print and inside that first of all i'll call my variable which is person and then i'll call its key that i want to access so for that purpose first of all you will have your square brackets and in that you'll pass your key so here you can see we have three keys age gender name let's go for name hit enter let's save this one and let's try to run it and as you can see it has returned as john successfully so this is the benefit of having dictionary that you can have different values associated with a particular key in here we did not have that luxury all of these values were associated with x and in case if i wanted to access any of these values i have to go with the index number but here we do not have this scenario we can access anything with their key values so that was all about the dictionaries and now let's move on to the next one let's talk about operator precedence well operator precedence in python refers to the concept of order in which different operators are evaluated in an expression 
When there is an expression that contains multiple operators, the order of their evaluation is determined by their precedence and it also specifies that which operators are evaluated first. In general, operators with higher precedence are evaluated before the operators that have low precedence. For example, if I declare a variable as x equals and if I write here 10 plus 3 minus 2 multiply by 4 minus 7 plus 8 and if I try to run this program, let's write here print and let's have x as the variable. What it will do? Well, first of all, it will multiply 4 and 2 because 4 and 2 have the highest precedence between them because multiplication has the highest precedence in this particular expression. Let's run this. Here we have 6 as an answer. How is that so? So 4 multiplied by 2 gets to minus 8 as we have minus sign with 2. After that, we have the precedence for addition and the first one is 10. So minus 8 plus 10 equals to minus 2. So minus 8 plus 10 equals to 2. 2 plus 3 equals to 5. And then again, we have to see if there is any more addition operation available. Yes, we do have one available. So 3 plus 2 plus 8 equals to 13. And if you minus 7 from, you get to have 6 as an answer. And that is exactly what do we have in here. So this is all because of the precedence of different operators in our expression. So let's have another expression. So for that, I'll write here y equals. Let's have 10 multiplied by 2 plus 13 minus 11 multiplied by 3. Let's save this one and let's try to run it. So I'll write here print. I'll call my y variable. I'll remove the above expression. Let's run this one. And here you can see we have zero as an answer. Well, why is that so? Well, again, let's check it. First of all, we have the precedence for this multiplication, which is 10 multiplied by 2. That is equal to 20. After that, we have another multiplication in our expression. And that is equal to 11 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 33. So let's give a space. Let's write here 33. And after that, we are left with one expression, which is 13. So we'll add 13 over this particular value and that becomes 33. So I'll write here 33. So 33 minus 33 equals to zero. And that is why we have this answer in here. So this is all about operator precedence. So be sure when you are trying to have more than one operators in your expression in Python programming language, because they follow a certain rule. So that was all about it. We'll talk about comparison and logical operators. First of all, let's talk about the comparison operators. First of all, if I write here x equals 5 greater than 2. And if I save this program, and now let's try to print it. So if I write here x, let's save this one and let's try to run it. Here it has written true as an answer. Why is that so? Well, this is true because we know that 5 is greater than 2. If I write here 5 is less than 2, it will check if this condition is true or not. This time it will return false as an answer as you can see in here because we know 5 is never less than 2. Now, if I write here 5 equal equals to what it will do, it will check if this value is equal to this value. Remember, single equal to sign means we are assigning some value and double equal to sign means we are comparing two values. So here we are just doing that. Now again, if I run this one, again it will return me false because 5 is never equal to 2 as you can see in here. Okay, let's say if I write here 5 is less than equal to 2. So it will check if 5 is less than or it is equal to 2. Well, as we know, it is neither less than or equal to 2. So again, we'll get false as an answer. And this time I'll write here greater than equal to. Let's save this one. And this time we'll get true as an answer. Why is that so? Well, we know that 5 is always greater than 2. Okay, there is one more comparison operator and that is not equal to. This is how it looks like. Let's save this one and we'll again get true as an output because we know that 5 is never equal to 2. So this condition is true. That is why true is an output. So if I conclude my comparison operators, we have equal to sign, we have less than, we have greater than, we have less than equal to, we have greater than equal to, we have not equal to. So these are different operators that you can use for comparison. And these are very important for you to learn Python programming language. 
So that was all about the comparison operators and now let's talk about the logical operators. Logical operators get used to have complex combinations of rules into our Python programming language. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, if I declare a variable as age equals, let's have a value as 30. And now let's print a Boolean expression. I'll write here print age greater than 25 and I want to have age less than 35. And if I save this one, what it will do? It will return me true because it will check first condition, which is age is greater than 25. Yes, age is greater than 25. Then it is checking if age is less than 35. Yes, age is also less than 35. So if I run this one, it has returned me true as an output. Now we have another logical operator that is called as or. So I'll write here or. Now in this case, if any one of these condition is true, it will return us true. For example, if I write here, age is greater than 50. Let's save this one. And now let's run it. It will return us true. Why is that so? Well, first of all, it will check if this condition is true. No, it's not. Then it will check if this condition is true. Yes, this condition is true. So that is why as we are using OR operator, it will return true as an output, just like this one in here. So this is how OR operator work. We have another operator, and that is if I write here, age greater than 50. We know this condition is false, but if I write here, not, what it will do, it will inverse the original decision or it will inverse the original condition that we have set in our print statement. Now, if I save this, let's run it. And again, it will return as true because we have inverted it. Now I will just remove this one. Let's save this one and let's run it. And this time it has written fall as an output. So now let's conclude this. So we have and operator in which both conditions must be true then we have or operator and in that only one condition needs to be true and the last one is not function or not operator basically it inverts everything so that was all about the logical and comparison operators and that also brings me to the end of this video i hope now that you must have liked and loved watching this one as now you have an idea that what is Python programming language and how you can become a pro in it. If that is the case, do leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care.